Hello and welcome back to All Things Money. I'm your host, David Blaine. During this segment, we're going to wrap up our topic, at least for today. This is a very important topic. I, I like to bring it up you know, every couple of months just to kind of remind people about how investing works and talking about bear markets being a necessary evil and the, the risk and reward and how, basically the basics of how investing works and what, what are you getting paid for. And if you venture beyond U.S. Treasury bills, you are getting paid to take risk. If you stick your money under the mattress, of course, there's the hidden uh, risk of inflation. Most people forget about that, but there's risk there. There's risk that somebody could steal it. If you put it in the bank, you eliminate the, the risk that somebody could steal it. Uh, theoretically, I guess they could steal your identity and still steal it, but you still have inflation risk. So whenever you take your excess earnings and you attempt to save it or invest it, there's some sort of risk. And understanding what those risks are, understanding the potential rewards, and sort of how they rank is very important. And when you're investing in the stock market, uh, especially what you're getting paid for is volatility risk, the fact that you don't know how much what you invested in is going to be worth at any given uh, period of time. And it's these times when, during underperformance of stocks compared to bonds, as we've had the past you know, 10 to 15 years, is that's when the discipline really gets, gets tested. And you have to continue to believe, or if you believe that there should be an additional reward for investing in the stock market over the bond market. I personally think that over time, it has to be. By, by definition, it has to be more expected return. It's just not going to work out that way all the time, and that's the risk that you take. That's the point of it. In order to achieve higher returns, you have to give up something. And part of what you give up may be a good night's sleep, uh, maybe a year's worth of good night's sleep, you know, at a time that there has to be something. If if the returns of the market were guaranteed, then the, the returns would not be there. And that's why whenever you hear that something is guaranteed, whether it be, you know, annuities or, um, you know, some huckster selling some CD from some Latin American country that's 12 percent guaranteed, whenever you hear it's guaranteed in investing, you have got to be extremely, extremely skeptical. You've got to figure out where the risks are and who's making the money because if somebody says it's guaranteed, then there's some sort of sort of problem with that that return. Um, okay, so we kind of wrap this up here with well, what what is an investor to do and how do you combat it? Because what happens is people start out with a plan and they, they or they go out and they invest in the market and a bear market comes along and they panic. They don't understand what's going on, they don't understand that this is just a natural part of investing, and so they end up abandoning ship. Either that or as, let's take um, you know, the US market or the European market, you know, people bailing out of the European market uh, left and right, abandoning ship, just at the wrong time. I mean, last year, believe it or not, the European market outperformed the US market. I mean, you would never know this stuff unless you study it all the time. And so by bailing out of the European market, you gave up significant returns last year. But yet all the headlines are Europe is collapsing, Euro is collapsing, Greek is, Greece has fallen into the Mediterranean, you know, all this sort of stuff. Italy is going out of business. Um, and so you miss at it. So the keys are first to have a well thought out plan. Figure out what you're trying to accomplish uh, get with an advisor, you know, like myself, explain, okay, if you have this type of portfolio, uh, you know, you're trying to reach this goal, and this type of portfolio will get you there, and what's, what's the journey look like? We'll lay out a road map. Uh, we lo I love doing this for clients and say, look, this portfolio that, that we're recommending, um, you know, it's like a road map. You want to get from North Carolina to Florida, well, you know, here's the road that you got to take. And if there's a, you know, construction or an accident, you may have to take a detour. The same thing with an investment plan is know where you're going, know historically what has happened. Now, things aren't going to work out exactly the same, but if you have a well-diversified portfolio, globally diversified portfolio, you're going to, have, you're going to end up with some more similar results than if you try to pick some individual stock or 
get into some sort of market timing scheme. So number one is have a plan uh, for your investments and, and write it down. If you work with an investment advisor like us, we develop an investment policy statement for everyone so that we pull when people start questioning the portfolio, we pull it out and we say, look, is this still what you're trying to accomplish? You know, et cetera, et cetera. The second key to that is don't take on more risk than you're willing to uh, endure. If you look at a portfolio and you know, your, your advisor says, well, we think this portfolio you know, over the long term is going to return about 7%, but you have to be willing to endure somewhere between a 15 and 20% decline in your portfolio at some point. Well, don't sign up for that. Don't you know, agree to that if you're not comfortable with that because in order to get that 7 8% rate of return, you're going to have to endure that time period. And the worst thing to absolutely do is right in the middle of an emotional bear market type period is make a decision to abandon your plan. Um, the, the preferable thing is ahead of time say, look, I'm not comfortable with that. Let's not have that type of portfolio so that you can, you can avoid it. Um, the third key to success, and I've talked about this already, is to um, not get into some sort of big market timing scheme. Now, on a long-term, and you know, I qualify that, on a long-term basis, what I mean by market timing is that today you're investing in the stock market and by some divine intervention or some guy you saw on TV, you decide, okay, tomorrow I'm getting out of the stock market. Okay, that's market timing. Sort of this binary on-off type, type thing. Um, as you age, you may r reduce the risk of your portfolio and move away from stocks. That's not market timing. Um, having uh, an event like the European crisis and the value of your European stocks goes down and U.S. goes up, well, selling some U.S. stocks and buying European, that's not market timing. Um, bonds going up significantly, stocks going down, rebalancing, adding some money to the stocks, taking it away from bonds, that's market, not market timing. So a long-term, well-thought-out plan of action that's fine. You want to keep adjusting your portfolio. You don't want to just leave it static. But stay away from the binary, I'm in the market, I'm out of the market, uh, market timing. It's just flat out does not work. There's nobody that has been able to successfully do it consistently over long periods of time. There are certainly people that have done it um, individually, occasionally, but not consistently. Well, that's all the time we have for today's show. I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll uh, be back again same time next week. For all things money, I'm David Blaine. The proceeding was a paid program. The opinions expressed are not necessarily those of WNBU and Interbanks Media.